if you look at that and you go, oh my God, that's dull, it looks like a granny bag. But it's a classic, should I have it? No, you don't like it. Don't buy it. Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already, I would absolutely love it if you would hit that subscribe button. Come join me, hit the bell notification button and you'll whenever I upload a video. Been lots and lots of handbag content recently and that's what we love over here. So the video I'm going to do today is a bit of a talking point, but don't worry, I have lots and lots of eye candy to show you, more than I originally anticipated. So um, for those of you that follow Wild Unfiltered, Amelia Rose's Closet, they've been talking about essential collections and essential bags to have or not have in your collection. and. It really got me thinking, um, well, the last video that I watched that's so it's fresher in my mind was Amelia's and I mean I basically, and this often is quite, ha this happens quite often, quite frequently, I basically completely agree with everything that Amelia said. I absolutely think that there are no must-have bags that you should have. I think that there are bags that as individuals you should have because they're the bags that you want um, and by that I mean should in terms of you can afford it and it's within budget and blah 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 but yes, this isn't about money, this, we're not thinking about budget, I know times are tough for a lot of people but this is, this is about dream world and rainbows and little ponies um, but yeah this is just Talking about the handbags without thinking about affordability. Obviously that is a factor if you're actually thinking about buying. Of course it is. Yeah, I try and make it like that. Um, so basically, my view is that people should have whatever they want to have. And if that for you is owning the classics, the classic Chanel, classic flap and the archetypal leather and hardware, then do it. If you look at that and you go, oh my God, that's dull, it looks like a granny bag, but it's a classic, should I have it? No, you don't like it, don't buy it. So with all that in mind, I then thought, well, I'm gonna do a list. I'm gonna take a few brands that I'm more familiar with. So I thought about, and I've done a list on my phone, I thought about Chanel, Hermes, Louis Vuitton, Dior, and Fendi. Those were just the brands that I just plucked out of the air. And then I thought about, for each of those brands, what do I think are banded around as being the classic bags? This is not to say these are the bags I think you should own by these brands. These are what I think of are deemed to be the classics. Um, so I did my list, um, and then I contemplated my own collection, <laughs> and I have some stuff to show you. So I'm going to talk it through, brand by brand. Um, so we're going to start off with the first one. Let's start with Chanel, um, and I think for me it was almost like the, one of the strongest brands in terms of the classic. So the archetypal absolute classic Chanel handbag in my opinion and I did also a bit of a re Google research as well someone done a blog and had agreed with a lot of the um, models that I'd pulled up for each brand is this now this is a timeless flap the classic flap the Karl Lagerfeld designed Chanel classic flap this is the double flap this is the size, I think they call it medium now, but it, it, it's known to a lot of us as the medium large. I mean, I mean that's confusing itself, but M slash L, but this is, yeah, the medium, the classic. Mine is in lambskin with gold hardware. Again, the classic, you know, um, I know caviar is very well um, sought after. I know Wild and Filtered loves the caviar over the lamb. Um, I'm a lamb lover, I have both offered, at the time I bought this, um, availability was a lot easier than it is now, 
Um, I had both in front of me. I, I had a choice in store of lamb, of caviar, of silver hardware, of gold hardware. I could have done whatever I wanted. And I, they're all the same price. Um, years before, and I don't know exactly what the year was that it switched over, but lamb used to be more expensive than the caviar. Um, but basically, the classic and... Well, I don't think it's like it so much now, but certainly um, Parisian style and in Paris, it was, it was lamb, like what you did with caviar. It's lamb is what you have. So basically, as I see it, the archetypal classic Chanel handbag to have is this exact one. Why did I buy this? If I'm really honest, this is one of my earlier um, luxury handbags, my first ever Chanel bag. If I'm really, really honest, I thought, for me, at the time, that handbag, star bag, um, you know, unicorn reach for, ultimate handbag achievement, is a classic Chanel bag. Um, the jumbo never appealed to me. The jumbo I found too big and boxy. Chain length is all wrong for a short ass like me. The medium large to me was that classic bag. It was something that I waited five years to buy. And there's a part of me that bought it because it's a classic bag. I bought, I, I, there's, if I'm really honest, there's a part of me that really thought, yeah, that's a classic bag to have. I should have one. If I can, you know, once I, once I could afford it. And it took me a few years and it was nowhere near what they are now. And um, I bought this in 2017. Um, brand new from the Chanel Boutique in Harrods, actually, who were lovely and really good to me. Um, now, I went out for lambskin over caviar just because it was so much more sumptuous. Um, but yeah, so do I think that you need to have one of these in your collection? Absolutely. If you love it. If you don't, then don't buy it. There's no point having something again. Oh, look at the classic that I've got in the handbag cupboard not going anywhere because I don't like wearing it. There's no point. Um, have I worn this as much as I should do? No. I'm trying to wear it a bit more and that that makes it sound like it's an effort. It's not. Um, I've had a bit of a rearrange in my, in my storage and it's a bit easier to get to now. So I think I will rotate my bags even more. I mean, I rotate a fair amount. But I'm going to try and rotate even more. So yeah, this is example one of me saying bags that you don't need to own and I own it. So that's Chanel. And I only really had the one truly classic style um, for Chanel. I know there's a lot of other styles that are now staples and considered classics in the terms they come up every year. But for me thinking of the ultimate classic design for Chanel, it's this one. So yeah. If you like it, get one. If you don't, then don't. That is my view. And then I thought about Hermes. If you think about Hermes, what is the ultimate? What is the classic bag? And I think there's two. Um, the Birkin. And the Kelly. So these are classics that I absolutely think you don't have to own. I have two Birkins. And I have um, four, four Kellys, four. Now, I'll tell you about it, which my bags just says eye candy. So this is my Birkin 30, which is the great size. It's not too big on, it holds a lot. Um, you can see it's great depth there. You can open it up at the top and have it as an open tote if you want to. Um, so yeah, this was, you know, I know for a lot of people, the Birkin, having a Birkin is the absolute ultimate handbag dream. It's seen as the Hermes bag to have. And um, that's not why I have one. I actually didn't even try and buy a Birkin when I bought this. I was after a garden party, um, which I couldn't get. I wanted this colour in garden party, which is rose poupe. Um, didn't have one. I um, said I was told that there was this coming in a week's time and did I want it? Okay. So here I am, I am now a very proud Birkin mama. Um, so mine is in rose poop right in Togo leather with palladium hardware. And this is like I say, a size 30. Um, the the Nort Retourne, this is before Celio even existed in the Birkin. Gorgeous, 
love this bag, used it a whole lot. Now do I own this because I wanted to have a Birkin? No. I think she's beautiful. To me, I find Birkins functional. My 35, which I got in Epsom, is fairly light because it's Epsom leather, not Clements or Togo. And it holds my laptop, it holds tea, shoes, notebooks, genders, makeup, you name it and it goes in it. Um, it's a great bag, I, I love it. Um, so yeah, my reason for owning Birkins is that I absolutely love them. Kellys. Love a good Kelly me. I just got this one to show you because I think that this actual one, bit 32 Celia box leather with gold hardware, is kind of the um, archetypal Kelly and um, and she's just beautiful. And when you look at a lot of vintage Kellys, they are box leather. I mean, if you get on in Rouge Ash as well and do that, they look stunning. They like, have the most gorgeous patina over time. Um, I love Kellys more than Birkins, if I'm really honest. I, 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 I flip flop between the two. Um, but I think for me, I find the convenience of the shoulder strap great. I find them. Not this one so much, but generally I find them really user friendly. Now a lot of people will look at this, and this one in particular, and go, that is a granny bag. It's a granny bag, and a lot of people say this and hate Kelly's for that very reason. To me, I think she's stunning. And I think as well that a lot of these classic bags, it comes down to personal style and taste as well. Now I'm quite simple in my taste. <laughs> I'm not particularly style, you know, like I'm not cutting edge, stylish, trendy. So maybe I think the reason I've got so many that are on my list <laughs> is because I, I, that, that aesthetic appeals to me. I'm quite classic and conservative in my taste. So this appeals to me. I find this quite easy to style in my wardrobe. But similarly, you know, I've got a Kelly 35 Retourne in, in Blue Hydra, which is really bright in your face bag, and I dress it up with an orange twilly. Um, so that's my more, you know, sporty go-to slouchy style. So, yeah. Again, if you don't like Kellys, don't get one. I love them. I love the convenience of them. The, the Kelly 25 is a great great size and if you get the Retourne especially it's I mean this is all creaky as it moves but the, the Retourne is you know I know for my 28 it's it's more slouchy it opens easy you can get stuff in and out it's a just a great bag so that's Hermes now when we come to Louis Vuitton what do we think the great classics are now this I found as a brand a lot easier to have a much longer list uh, by Hermes as well, I almost, almost put the lead on, there's this, this number of other in the constants, but Louis Vuitton, I thought really the ultimate is the Speedy, um, and then I thought the Alma, these were like the most heritage bags for me, Speedy, Alma, and then Neverfull. Um, those for me were like the, the, the top three, I think the Petit Mal and the Pochette Matisse are also, you know, creeping up that list. So for me, Louis Vuitton had a, a slightly longer list of what I thought of were, were classic, you know, when I spoke about the Chanel, I was basically this one. So what do I have? Now at one point I did own a multicolour Alma, but it just didn't, I, I didn't even use it, it didn't even leave the house for me. Um, it just didn't quite work out. But I do have the Neverfull. Uh, I bought this new from Boutique in New Bond Street, I think I got this one. Um, mine has been used and used and used. It's got a good patina on it. I love it when they get, I love it when the Vichetta has a nice honey patina. I don't like it when it's like dark brown, but I think when it's this sort of color, I love the way it blends in with the with the monogram. I think it's truly beautiful. I, I, love, uh, I love when it starts to age. I've got this tag on here now and it's starting to, it's starting to catch up, we'll just leave it out and let it do its thing. So, um, yes, that is one of them. This is the MM size, by the way. The Speedy, another one. Now, I looked at Speedies. I've looked at the 30. At one point, I was going to get the 25. 
in Demi and Ben, although I think the monogram probably is more classic with all that fachetta. And I just didn't, I didn't take the plunge. Um, I then looked at the Speedy 20 in on prompt leather and there's gorgeous midnight blue. Um, Lorna actually from um, Lorna Style has the same colour in a Vavin wallet on chain, but it's the same leather and it's gorgeous. I loved it and comes with really nice silver hardware. But I tried it on and I just found that for me, speedies don't work. I don't really want the speedy as a handheld bag. I kind of want to be able to use it cross body with the strap so I'm more hands free. But I find it's almost like too bulky, it's too wide to sit nicely. Then they met Speedy Nano, don't they? Um, so this is not the original Nano, this is the second edition of the Nano. So this is the one that comes with the removable, as you can see, and adjustable strap. Now, there was so much hype about this bag. There was so much hype. Now, did I buy into the hype? Was it the hype that made me get this? You know what, no. Because I'd, what I'd, I'd always gone over that because all the hype was around the original new Nano. Um, this was like the H, I think it's called the HL, which is like this same dimensions, but was years back and didn't have a strap. So the, the Nano Speedo, Speedy of 2019, 2020, whenever it was, um, the hype over that was massive. I nearly got swept up in it, but they weren't, one, they weren't readily available, and two, not the strap not being adjustable and not being removable for a short ass like me who most crossbody bags come come a bit long on um stopped me and I didn't want to buy one and then get the strap hacked and adjusted. I mean that's what I could have done but I don't like the thought of that. Um and then when they brought out this newer version I was like yes that is for me. Now because it's not too deep this sits lovely crossbody, and I have to say this bag absolutely packs a punch. How much goes in this, it, it's just great. It's, it's cute, it holds everything I need. I actually find the access, you know, the, the zip's really good. I find the access okay. I think because it's not too big a bag, you're not losing stuff because there's no room to lose it. Um, I don't use a pouch with this, I just have it as is and I absolutely love this. So maybe I got caught up with a bit of hype, but absolutely no regrets whatsoever. This is going nowhere. I think it's super cute and super handy. Um, I also love using this if I'm going to the hairdressers because I, I won't bother with the strap because, um, I mean, those people, honestly, the anxiety I get on other people's behalf, um, Lizzie Elise Millen, She'll do a vlog, she'll go to the hairdressers and there's like a Birkin or a Kelly or something on the shelf. And I'm like, oh my God, there's hair dye, there's chemicals, even like the, you know, the antibacterial stuff, they put the tools in that's like on the pot on the shelf. I'm like, no, no, don't take her mess to hairdressers. It's, it's just, it's too much. <laughs> so a bit of LV canvas, it's very small. <laughs> yes, we can do that. So a great, great bag. Um, so that's th those classics that I own. So this is the person that thinks you don't need to have these classics in your collection. Dior. It's Lady Dior, isn't it? The Lady Dior is the ultimate. I have two. I have this one, which I think is going to hit the departure lounge. Um, and I have a mini, which is absolutely not hitting the departure lounge. But yeah, this is very subtle. It's very elegant, it's very ladylike, in the ultra matte version it's a little bit sporty, it's just beautiful, this colour is stunning as well. I sound like someone that doesn't want to get rid of their bag, I know, but I don't reach for it. Um, so yeah, this is absolutely what I think of as being the classic jewel. Other styles I thought of included, for example, the saddlebag, but again I think that goes up and down in terms of being a trend, not a trend, so yeah. Lady Jewel, absolutely classic, elegant, timeless. If that's what you're after, buy one. If it's not, if you want fab and funky, then get something that, you know, even if you want Dior, get a, a small caro or something in a bright, funky colour. Get a bobby bag, get a, you know, there's, there's loads, um, absolutely loads there. But yet, yeah, this to me is the classic 
Dior bag. Um, and I have two of those. Fendi. I keep thinking of like Sex and the City and I think the ultimate classic Fendi bag is a baguette bag. I can't show you one. I don't own one. Now that's not to say I don't like them. I absolutely do. But I haven't found one, I haven't come across one yet that I want so much that it, I'm willing to buy it and it's going to get used over my Hermes bags. I think because I love my Hermes bags particularly so much and I find my Louis Vuitton bags so functional that I've kind of got function and beauty covered off with Hermes and Louis Vuitton. Largely, if I'm really honest. So for me to buy other brands, like Dior, this is for Dior, and Fendi and Chanel to get a look in. It's got to either be like this, something that I know I will use for years and years. You know, in 10, 20 years time, this isn't going to look too young on me. This isn't going to look like, oh my God, look at that weird bag that old woman's wearing. This isn't going to do that. So this is, a, this is a, you know, I know they call it timeless bag, but I think it genuinely is. And I tend to buy my bags for longevity. I don't really, I don't, I hate selling. So I do sell if I don't, if I need to, but it's not, it's not my motivation. Whenever I buy a bag, I buy it with the intent of keeping it. I never buy bags as investments. I buy them as investments for me, if that makes sense. And that's something that Amelia's covered as well. So I don't buy a bag as a monetary investment. I buy them as an investment in my collection, as an investment in my happiness, because Particularly, you know, this is one of my absolute favourite from my whole collection. I look at this bag and she just brings me joy. Um, so to me, that is my investment. The smile I have on my face when I'm walking down the road carrying my nice pretty bag, you know. Most people where I live wouldn't have no idea this is a Birkin. If I told them it was a Birkin, they'd probably go, what's that then? Who's Hermes? Well, it's a bit like Chanel, but nicer. Oh, right, okay. Uh, People don't know. So for me, this is just this, the beauty of this and how much I love this aesthetic puts a smile on my face. Um, so the Fendi Baguette, I like them. I've been tempted, but not enough to quite um, bite the bullet and, and purchase one. I think I will do one day. I don't know when. I don't know what colour. I don't know what size. It would be small. It'd be smallish. Um, it won't be a sequin one. Um, that's too blingy for my style. And I think the worry of stuff falling off is too much for me. <laughs> Whilst I don't baby my bags and I do use them, I, I, I need to relax a bit. The other style that I think is a classic by Fendi is the peekaboo. And I do have a mini peekaboo. And I have this one in, it's white, but it's actually an off-white. It's beautiful. It has all the logo interior, and they come with a little Rain Mac as well. It's the only other brand that I knew of other than Hermes that comes with a little Rain Mac. So yeah, loving, loving this interior. So yeah, I do have a, a mini peekaboo. This is actually a great bag as well. Got little feet. It's got two sections so you can organise things. It's got a little slip pocket, a little zip pocket so you can put precious things in. You can have it more open and grab things. And the whole sort of peekaboo idea is that it over time flops down and you can see in. <laughs> and, um, but if you want to, then you can just close it. It's not the easiest, but you can just push it through. It's easier when you're wearing it than holding it. You can just push the bag through and close it like that. And you can do that on both sides should you wish. I never do and I don't store it like that either so it's probably not the easiest but you can see it right there. There we have it nice and closed. The one handle, cross body strap, yeah I don't I don't like what I, I don't like what that does to it. Um the medium so like the regular size peekaboo I nearly bought as a work bag years ago but I just found it that little bit because it's got quite good depth to it I just found it that little bit too big but this is gorgeous so that was it those were all my brands um, and these are some of the bags that I have to share with you 
to re-emphasise, I absolutely do not think you need to own any of these. For me, they're great bags and they work out, they, well, apart from the jewel, um, they work out great. Um, I will never sell this, I think that it's just, yeah, it's, it, it is beautiful to me. And um, like I say, but if you're looking at this and you're hating it, then absolutely don't. Don't get one. If you're looking at this and you're going, it's just a tote bag, get a tote from anywhere, then buy a tote from anywhere or, you know, don't, don't, don't waste your money. Because if you don't absolutely buy into the aesthetics and the quality and the colours and the leather of this, the price that they're priced at, it's not worth it. It really isn't. Um, for me, this is worth it. <laughs> no, I'm hugging her now, going, I'm giving me a bit, sweetheart. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop babbling on. I'm going to film another video and I'm going to see you very soon. Bye bye.